this is uh, just at the right timing because what I want to talk to you about are some of my own ideas and solutions and inventions in my respective field. No? But uh, always note that this is for my field and I'm not telling you to do the same things because I'm already there doing some changes. What I want you to see is how these things are generated and maybe hopefully it will also help you generate your own ideas uh, for this or for whatever uh, endeavor later on that uh, may come your way. Okay? Now, what's nice about ideas is that they're free. We just, we just think about it. And ideas, particularly for uh, ideas for solving problems like traffic, pollution, population control, and so on and so forth, those uh, problems still exist primarily because the idea to solve them have not yet been put forward. That's it. No, wala pang nag ng tamang idea in order for us to combat these problems. That's the only uh, reason why they still exist. Inventions are tangible objects and your ideas can transform into tangible objects that you can sell or someone use. So I'll show you some examples later on. And um, yeah, hopefully it will, it will spark something in your brains to, to have your own ideas. By the way, these ideas doesn't, uh, they, they don't have to be the, the wide ranging, I will solve world hunger, world peace, and so on. It can be as small as the next fashion craze or the next dance step, <laughs> right? But these are all ideas, they all started as ideas of people. And I'm inspired by one particular quote. And the quote comes from President Barack Obama when he was running for president of the United States. And what he said simply was that, was that more powerful than the march of a mighty army is an idea whose time has come. Meaning that an idea, no matter how intangible it is, it's just an idea, you know, can actually be more powerful and create change. You know, the simple idea in this case, ang idea niya actually is himself, no, being a young black president of the most powerful nation. Just that idea was enough in order for him to get elected. No? And therefore, the power of uh, generating ideas always have to start with the first step, which is generating it. Without it, wala. No? Tama na yung mga environmental projects natin ng, uh, uh, let's see, tree planting. Tama na yan. No? We're, we're more intelligent than that. Tama na yung let's clean up the roads. Okay na yan. No? We are destined to actually produce a little bit greater no? and wide-ranging ideas than those that, that were conceived by those without any ideas. Okay? Here are pictures of, uh, from, from my uh, line of work. I, I do a lot of research on water pollution kasi pet peeve ko talaga yung mga maduduming ilog. This is Make a Wine River in Bulacan. Super dirty water. We went on a banka ride through the Make a Wine River in Bulacan. The water is, uh, doesn't feel like water. It's thick. No? Feeling ko I can walk over it already. Ganun kakapal yung tubig. No? And it's color black. And uh, here are other pictures of Make a Wine River. Here's a picture of a river in Negros Occidental. These are actually two rivers. One river comes from the mountains. Pristine, clear, drinkable water. Now, have you ever been to a river where you can scoop up water and drink it directly? Malamig pa? We're not familiar with that. Try to do that in uh, our rivers here. Mamamatay ka. And then this other river comes from another place where there are a lot of houses and piggeries. And from where they meet, okay, the brown stuff in this uh, polluted river pollutes the entire river from here on in, from, from there, going downstream. So I go, oh, what happened to the nice river here? It stops there when they meet. So my research started by thinking, okay, pollution, no? in nature is actually natural. There are natural pollutants in nature, but nature itself also provides for its cleaning mechanism. It cleans itself. 
And the cleaning mechanism for nature, for rivers, for example, are areas called wetlands. These are your lagoons, marshlands, um, swamps, and so on and so forth, where the river, prior to it coming out to the ocean, goes through the wetlands like this. And there are cleaning mechanisms in wetlands, sediments, bacteria, plants and animals, they all do their part and clean the water before it exits into the ocean. And what once it exits, it's clean already. Okay? So, what is my idea? My idea is to look for these things in the wetlands and bottle them up. Bottle it up, if possible. And put that bottle near Makawain River, Pasig River, and let the water pass through it and it's clean. That was the idea. And this is not solely my idea because during that time, in early 2000, there were other people starting to think about the same thing. No? And uh, they have more budget, so this is, uh, these are pictures of uh, the, the research that they were doing. So what happens is that you have dirty water, for example, water that you flush from your toilet no, with, with your number one and your number two in there. Okay? Instead of flushing it, they put it into a vat like this with all the plants and animals found in wetlands and then water from this goes to the next vat cleans it further all natural goes to the next one like this and what you end up here is clean water maybe not drinkable water but definitely not sewage water no not the not the type of water that you put in and you get clean water that was the idea Here's my own experiment. No? So I got very dirty water in UP, right there, color brown, and lots of whatever is uh, whatever sank at the bottom. No, I won't explain it to you anymore, but you can guess what these things are. And then I have a blow-up picture here. I got this water, put it through, because poor lang tayo. No? So my experiment was uh, we're in uh, Coke bottles, okay? put this water through my filter and and we researched on plants and, and things. This first filter contains some marshland plants, some soil, and some gravel, no? Bato bato. And what I got from this water here is this water here. And they said, wow, pwede, no? I'm onto something here. From here to here. I said, great, no? And I continue. I get this water. Filter, filter it through gravel, no? rocks, and I get this water and say, oh, parang dumumi ah, lalo pang dumumi. So something's wrong with my gravel filter here. In any case, I get this water again, filter it through sand, and sand is what we find in marsh areas and beach areas and so on. And this is the water that we get from this. And I say, okay, we're on the right track again. And my last secret ingredient is charcoal, no? In wetlands, no, we produce a lot of organic matter from dead trees and uh, other plants, no, including animals, siguro. And and uh, these organic materials are actually uh, natural cleaners of water. So I get this water, filter it through charcoal, and I don't get black water, but I get clear water. Maybe not drinkable water, but from here to here, I am able to clean the water without any cost. There's no machine, no electricity, all these materials. Maybe charcoal, I think I bought the charcoal for 10 pesos, some bag ng charcoal. But the rest, they're free. So what I'm, what I'm t telling you is that I can clean the water without actually any major cost. And I can do this for Pasig River. So I was so excited and I said, next step, do it in a larger scale. So all the things that, that worked in my lab experiment, I placed it inside a drum, no, malaking drum, and you can see the plants growing on top. And then I went back to where I collected the water and I asked a person, Manong, pakihukay naman ng isang malaking butas dyan, I will put the filter. And I said, ayoko dyan, sabi nung Manong, dumi-dumi dyan, no? No? Bibigyan na lang kita 100 pesos and it, this is uh, in the name of science, I said. And finally, he said, okay. So I started to dig the, the hole and here's the very dirty creek where a lot of uh, dirty water passes through. And this is the setup. 
the dirty water goes into the filter and it comes out again through a hose and here are the results NTU is a measure of how murky the water is it starts at 207 NTU sobrang malabong tubig at the end of the, the hose I get a wa water that is 6.28 NTU and the cost is 100 pesos for manong and uh, some scolding from my mother because I got the the drum from, from home. When I came back from the US, halos sabay kami ni Gang bumalik. We had an idea. I had an idea for a school. Sabi ko, I want a school, a science school. But I don't want a Philippine science high school. I want a Philippine science preschool wherein we teach kids science as early as three years old. Because every single child is actually curious about the world he is in from the time that he was he is born up to around eight years old from eight years old we're not curious anymore and lo and behold the science curriculum of the country only starts in grade three when we are eight years old so we are not anymore interested with science but earlier than that we are all curious no all the guys here I know you played in your backyard with your friends, you found a bug or whatever, no? looked at it, oh, you okay to, ah. and then whatever, no? sometimes you eat it, or basta, you're just curious. But, but that is all erased when we reach eight years old, and it's not followed up in school. So, in our school, we start them early. Teach uh, grade one science to three-year-olds teach grade 2 science to 4 year olds and so on and so forth and here are just pictures of myself teaching them how the heart works and if you have to teach how the heart works you can't teach it in diagrams if possible dissect a person in front of them but if that's not possible do an experiment you know, with them lots of field works every single week they come out you know, they go out and explore you know, the world and this is a, this is a nice uh, experiment wherein I was teaching them foundations of buildings. You know, that buildings actually have foundations, columns, and beams. But I didn't teach them that. And all I told them was to construct the tallest building possible with just clay and toothpick. That's it. So, as children, you would expect, Ay, tataasan ko. Clay, toothpick, clay, toothpick, clay, toothpick. At some height, it will collapse. Kasi isang paa lang siya eh. And then they will realize themselves, ay, dalawahin ko yung paa kasi dalawahin yung paa ko. Clay, clay, toothpick, toothpick, clay, toothpick, clay, toothpick na. Okay? And then it will collapse again after a certain height. And then they will realize on their own, damihan ko yung paa. And as you can see here, ang dami ng paa. Okay? Several, ano. And after that, no, they actually have learned by themselves the concept of foundation. And then I will show them bare buildings and the foundations of buildings almost exactly the way they built it. No, ganun lang yung, ganun yung treatment. In our school, um, one time I saw them playing with Pokemon cards. No, who still plays Pokemon cards here? Ayun, one. <laughs> okay, umamin. Sabi ko, and then they were playing, here's my Master Blaster Snow Power, ganyan. 38 points versus your uh, ogre from the green caves, whatever, no? 39 points. So, because what they learn from that? Wala naman. Wala naman. So, I made them my own cards. But instead of make believe monsters, researched on all the fossils no? of Tyrannosaurus Rex and all the other cre creatures with accurate information. So, now they play with these cards no? and I brought some samples there these cards and so you can hear them already here's my stegodon three meters tall ganyan <laughs> or Tyrannosaurus Rex 65 million years old to beat your Dunkleosteus 208 million years old I think it's fun medyo, medyo geeky pero better than Pokemon one last invention and my time is up one time in, in my class, I was talking about water pollution and the entire class was diverted to talking about home care and personal care products and how toxic the chemicals are in these personal products. 
And so the solution was to make our own. That's it. Make our own. So we made the research on chemicals that are environment friendly, checked out all the chemicals, made the product to disinfect your carpets and couches. And our best product is actually a hand sanitizer. I brought some samples. Okay. And I will even let you try it. Okay. Hand sanitizer made of ethyl alcohol. The problem with alcohol, although it cleans your hands, it's actu it actually dries your hands. Okay? Tama? Dries your hands. So, what's the solution? A hand sanitizer with moisturizer. Oh my God! A hand sanitizer with moisturizer. The point is there's no small idea. There are big ideas and little ideas, but all ideas are just trying to solve a problem. No? And if you're trying to solve a small problem, small idea is needed. And so there's nothing small enough that you won't bother doing it. We started the, and, and therefore end with a quote, and the quote comes from Linus Pauling, a very famous chemist, already dead. And he was talking about ideas, and what he said, no? sums everything up and he simply said that the best way to arrive at a great idea is to just have a lot of ideas one out of 100 ideas that you have may just work and may just solve a very important problem don't worry about the 99 palpak ideas you have don't worry about it that one idea that can contribute something for the betterment of society or maybe the next uh, business idea that will make you rich, that is what is important. Don't sweat the other ideas that may, be, uh, may account to nothing at all. No? But again, the first step is to generate those ideas. Pantay pantay lang tayo. And I wish you well in generating your ideas. Hope you learned something this afternoon. Thank you very much.